Good morning. Today we are going to scan a Volkswagen Jetta. And we're using the Harbor Freight Zurich um, scanner. And it's wireless, so we plug the wireless uh, DLC connector into the DLC. And we go ahead and choose Volkswagen in here. And now we're on a system scan, it's at 53%. We're gonna see which modules have codes in them and we're gonna go ahead and try to do a preliminary diagnosis of it and go from there. So, um, we'll be right back. Okay, now that we have done the whole full system scan, we clicked on engine control module and it gives us this, which is identifying basically what the module is and the coding. So we're gonna press okay. We're gonna wait till it loads. And we're gonna go ahead and click on read DTC. And that should show us what we have. So we have a 68A, um, that's an interesting code, P068A, P0480, which is a cooling fan one control circuit, uh, P0562, uh, system voltage too low, and P0070 ambient air temperature sensor circuit. Um, let's make sure that there it is. There's one more P0071 ambient air temperature sensor circuit range performance. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna record all of these. We're going to look at freeze frame data to see what we have. And I'll show you that in just a moment. And we'll go from there. So we, what we call interrogated the module and we found these codes. So what we're looking at is PO480 and there's some possible uh, problems here that this uh, Zurich is letting us understand. So we could have a faulty fuse, so we're gonna check the fuses. We could have a coolant fan control module problem. Uh, we could have the cooling fan bad. Uh, wiring interconnectors, which would be, you know, a short to ground or a short to power, either way. Uh, wiring interconnectors from the coolant fan, and, uh, you know, we check, we'll check the fuses, we'll check coolant fan control module, and we'll check the output test through the computer here, and we'll see what happens. So here we go from this code. So we came back to the screen here, and we're going to read the freeze frame. Choose that, Click yes, because it's a module error for some reason. So we're gonna re-interrogate the module, which means basically re-hooking up the system. Once it's done there, we're gonna press okay. We're going to read freeze frame. And we have two different codes here still, so we're gonna read the freeze frame here. Let's see what we have. So our ambient temperature isn't even on the data list. Okay, you go to the donuts store? Okay. Be right back. Yep. Yep, doesn't even want to tell us what the ambient temperature is. Well, limited freeze frame, I guess. So we're gonna go back. We're gonna test the ambient air temperature sensor because this seems to be a hard code. We cleared the codes and these two came directly back. So we're gonna go ahead and test the ambient air temperature sensor uh, in the next frame here. Okay, so this is where the ambient air temperature sensor is right here. You see it in there. So it's gonna be pretty difficult to get to. We're gonna try to pull some of the lower covers off here and get it up in the air and go from there. Uh, so now we're on trying to do the data stream here. So we selected data stream and now we're gonna select which PIDs we actually want to look at with this Zurich. So I already chose intake temperature sensor. Right now we're looking for on this list whether or not we have ambient air temperature because that's the code we're getting. And usually the system is looking to see if the ambient air temperature and the intake air temperature are relatively similar. If the values are different, then it posts the code. So, 
we're looking for it and I do not see ambient air temperature sensor. We may not be able to get a PID like that. I did, however, look at the sensor itself and the connections looks fine. The wiring is okay. We tested that. So we may just end up trying to replace the sensor and seeing what happens. Now these are hard coats, which means that uh, there's definitely a problem. It's not an intermittent issue. Uh, so if we put a new sensor in it, which isn't really that much money, and the codes don't come back, then we probably have fixed the problem. I still have not seen ambient temperature, but I keep seeing intake manifold pressure, intake manifold temperature, see? Intake air temperature. Temper a temperature adaptation factor. That's a good one. Um, I do not see it. I do not see ambient. Okay. Now, obviously, it may not support all of these PIDs, uh, but we'll see what happens once we get to the next screen. And I think I'm just going to end up starting and going to the next screen. So we're just going to click OK. We're going to try it again. I don't know why it did that. Maybe because I had the key off for a second. So we have to go back, start over. Press OK. Now go to data. Uh, stream right there. Uh, read by list. OK. Uh, in this case, I'm just going to click select all and press OK. And we're going to look at every PID that's available in this car. Now, we're going to scroll down while it's doing it and look for intake manifolds temperature. I mean, uh, air intake temperature. And Zurich's a little slow on the PIDs, probably because I chose all of them. Now, you see here it says... Intake air temperature 113. It moved. Where did it go? Where did it go? This factor is confusing here. All right, Zurich. There may be something you need to improve on. This is not conducive to a live test. There's intake air temperature, 111 degrees. Now here our ambient temperature outside is about 90 degrees. So within 10 degrees, we should be okay, right? The engine is now at normal operating temperature. So our intake air temp should be a little bit hotter than our ambient temperature. So we're gonna go ahead and try putting a new ambient air temperature sensor and seeing what happens if that doesn't work then we'll go to looking at the mass airflow sensor or map sensor uh, cluster we'll go from there